Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is for you. Welcome back to another Division 2 video. My name is Prime and today we're gonna talk about all the things that will help you out doing the most damage in the incursion. As you probably already saw on a few gameplay videos and of course a few build videos, we can hit up to that 5 million a crit shot with that Ouroboros. But that is all because there are a few boosts active within the game and what we are using within the incursion. So today I'm going to talk about all the skills that are used and all the gear pieces that are used to help you out do the most damage possible and just shred through this incursion. So without further ado, let's dive right in and let's start with the gear that you can equip to help out yourself and your teammates do more damage or even gaining more survivability. Starting with the Coyote's Mask, and everybody knows this mask, of course. This is one of the best masks to run. And why? Because it already comes with everything that we are looking for for a DPS build. Critical hit chance, critical hit damage, and then a mod, whatever you want to add to it. But why is this Coyote Mask so important within the incursion as of its talent? The talent reads, Pack Instincts. You and all allies gain a bonus based on the distance of the last enemy you hit. 0 to 15 meters, 15 meters to 25 meters, and 25 meters and above. And why is this so good? Because if your team runs around with three Coyotes mask, you can get all the buffs up to that 35% critical hit chance and 35% critical hit damage. So if somebody hits from 0 to 15 meters, you will gain that 25% critical hit damage. If somebody else hits 15 to 25 meters, you will gain that 10% critical hit damage and 10% critical hit chance. And if the third agent hits somebody above 25 meters, you will gain an extra 25% critical hit chance. And this is so incredibly important and so good for you, as then you can lower your critical critical hit chance a little bit to do more critical hit damage output. Normally you will always have two boosts or at least one boost, it depends on which area or which boss you are fighting, but most of the time you will have that 35% critical hit damage and 10% critical hit chance. 9 in the 10 times you will always have these two first boosts so you can then lower your critical hit chance to 50% and still build into that critical hit damage and that's how you already hit harder while you're running around with that coyote's mask. And then let's stay in the realm of the DPS builds and the Bloody Knuckles is another great, great addition to your DPS build, but mainly only for the Lovebirds. Yes, you can still use them on other bosses as well, but we notice that it is the best on the Lovebirds. And why the Bloody Knuckles? Again, this comes with the attributes that we want on there, weapon damage, critical hit chance, and critical hit damage. But again, just like with the Coyote's Mask, we are doing it for the talent. The talent is over the top. Damaging an enemy with a grenade or striking an enemy with a melee attack activates Seeing Red. Seeing Rats grants a 25% extra weapon damage and 100% melee damage. Seeing Rat lasts 20 seconds and has a cooldown of 60 seconds after completion. But you can reset that cooldown if you just hit somebody with a melee attack or hit somebody with the effect of a grenade again, and then the cooldown will instantly go away, smack somebody again, throw a grenade again, and that seeing rat will be activated again, giving you that 25% weapon damage. This is only for you. So always make sure that if you are on the Lovebirds, that two people on your DPS team are running the Bloody Knuckles, and the other one runs the coyotes. Because we know we need to be close to the lovebirds, so you will only get one buff or one boost 
from that coyote's mask so it's only needed to run one coyote's mask and then run two bloody knuckles so two people on your dps team will have that extra 25 percent weapon damage and this helps out a lot so the combination of the bloody knuckles and of course that coyote's mask is a must-have especially on the lovebirds you can just shred through them in a quick and easy fashion and then for our third gear piece we are going over to the healer build this has two pieces of gear that is needed within the incursion it will give you some extra damage output and it will give you some survivability so to start we're talking about the setup backpack this is a named Uzina Gatica backpack don't really look at the attributes for now you want to look for repair skills and skill haste on there but I'm still looking for it because that core attribute will always be armor so you need to roll that to skill tier and that's why you need to find that unicorn with repair skills and skill haste already on the attribute so you can roll that core attribute away for some skill tier but why are we using the setup because this comes with a perfectly opportunistic enemies you hit take 15 percent more damage from all sources and this is multiplicative damage so on a healer build you only have to tap a few enemies with your shotgun or of course with your marksman rifle but we found out that shotguns are a little bit easier and this gives everybody an extra 15% multiplicative damage for 5 seconds. So next to that you keep your teammates alive, you're giving them a huge buff in damage as well. And then jumping over to our fourth gear piece, and that is again an exotic gear piece. And what are we talking about? We're talking about the BTSU gloves. Again, one of the most important things on a healer build. This, of course, comes with the attributes that we're looking for. Core attribute, skill tier, skill haste, and repair skills as the normal attribute. But again, it's an exotic, so we're doing it for the talent. The talent is called Transference Overclock. Grants 15% hive skill haste per skill tier. And detonating the hive refreshes your skill cooldowns and grants you overcharge for 15 seconds but if you are at skill tier 6 what we are on a skill build what we are on this healer build this effect also applies to all of your allies so yes all your allies will gain an overcharge of 15 seconds as well this is very useful throughout the whole incursion and not just for one particular boss fight as this gives you and your allies your hives back so if you're running around with a revive hive what most people are doing you go down, you lose your hive, then the healer can overcharge and everybody has their second life back in their revive hive. But next to that, it also overcharges all the skills that you can use to boost your teammates' damage output. So talking about skills, this is a perfect segue to jump over the skills and let me show you what skills you want to use and what skills are very, very needed to do that 3.3 million, that 5 million, that 6 million crit shots on those bosses. How you can just shred through everything. So let's jump over to the skills and let me show you why this overcharge is so freakishly important if you want to do a lot more damage and stay alive because this gives you a lot of extra survivability as well. Starting with the hive and we're not talking about all the hives or all the other skills that you can use I'm only talking about the skills that will give you an extra edge within the incursion the first one will be the booster hive this booster hive is mainly used again 
on the lovebirds and why because this booster hive buffs your weapon handling hazard protection and melee damage and this is very very important because of course martinez will try to put you on fire with his enormous flamethrower and this will have you protected and that buff amount starts at 20% on a full red build but can go up to that 100% hazard protection so you are fully protected for that fire but the more beautiful thing is then of course next to that as you can see if we scroll down that the overcharge will give us even more stim charges more stim efficiency more range drone speed doesn't really matter health doesn't really matter but that skill haste of 150 percent is very useful as well especially if you're running around with that pulse you can keep pulsing if your shield breaks or if any other skill breaks you will get it back so so much faster and this will help you out as well but of course it will help you in that hazard protection and everything as well. And that's why we mainly use the booster hive on the lovebirds to make sure that our reload speed is a little bit faster because that is in the weapon handling category. So you can even reload faster and then you can do more damage output. And then for survivability, of course that hazard protection that will protect you from that fire from Martinez or of course that shock from Johnson. And that is exactly the same for the scanner pulse. And you think, what? The scanner pulse? Yes, the scanner pulse of course pulses the surrounding area for hostiles and visually highlights them on the target's hut. And this is something that everybody knows, but if you overcharge this scanner pulse, as you can see, it's not only giving you that 200% effect duration, but it also gives you weakness exploit. You and your allies damage is amplified by 15% to pulsed targets. So let's take the lovebirds for example again. If you run to the middle, if you wanna go damage them, your healer overcharges his hive after that you will pulse that weakness exploit kicks in and for 15 seconds you have a 15 percent amplified damage upon that enemy so this is why most people are using that scanner pulse because it will activate that extra damage output and again it is an amplified damage output this comes up on your damage and that's why Again, with all these combinations, you can hit up to that 5.5, even close to that 6 million crit shots with your Ouroboros. And that's why we're shredding through this incursion and especially those pesky lovebirds. And then for the next skill that everybody should use, and that is the Striker Shield. Yes, this shield is behind the specialization, but like I told you in a previous video, how to boost your damage and your survivability for your teammates with those specializations, I will put it on the screen right now. This is one of the things that should be on every single team setup with of course that firewall specialization why are we using this because this gives us an extra damage bonus per enemy again let's take the lovebirds for example if i'm standing there with my striker shield two people are in front of me so we're gaining an extra 22 percent of bonus damage at a max if you have all the correct mods on your shield of course so we're gaining an extra 22 percent and it's not only for me but if my teammates are standing behind me they will get that extra 22 percent bonus as well until one of the lovebirds goes down there's only one enemy in front of my shield so then it drops back to that 11 percent but again if this shield gets overcharged you will gain a lot more you will gain 500 percent active regeneration 400 percent shield health 100 percent holster regeneration but to be honest 
that doesn't matter at all. This is all over that 15 seconds of overcharge as that extra buff comes in as well of that 2.5%. So now we are on 13.5%. The moment that two enemies are in front of you, then you're gaining a 27% bonus damage for you and all of your allies standing behind you. But now a more beautiful thing pops in and that's why I said the active regeneration, the shield health and the holster regeneration don't really matter on the overcharge because we are gaining shield wall your shield is invulnerable yes whenever that healer overcharged you have 15 seconds of invulnerable shield standing in front of your enemies standing in front of those lovebirds gaining an extra weapon damage output and just staying alive for that full 15 seconds and within that 15 seconds you can do so so much more extra damage and that's why we're running around with this firewall shield as well all of these gear pieces all of these skills will definitely help you out boost yourself through that incursion getting some extra survivability gaining some extra damage output and will definitely definitely help out your team so to recap a little bit for our gear we will have the coyotes mask we will have the bloody knuckles as for the gloves we will have the btsu gloves and we will have the backpack the named backpack from Ozina Gatica, the setup. Those are the four different gear pieces that you need to run on your team setup or per boss area. Make sure that you talk to your team who is running what to make sure that you will always stay on top of that damage output and of course survivability. Then next to that, of course, that we just talked about, but for the recap, we're talking about the skills. Of course, that booster hive for your extra reload speed, for your extra weapon handling, for your extra hazard protection as well. Especially useful if you are fighting those lovebirds with that pesky flamethrower from Martinez. Then, of course, we will have that scanner pulse that will give you that extra amplified damage for 15 seconds for 15%. And of course, the striker shield. And those are all the things that we like to use. And if you get this together, if you get the synergy correct with all of these things active, you can hit up to that 5 million, even 6 million a crit shot with that Ouroboros. It is so beautiful. And that's why we're shredding through people. And that's why you see the speedrunners without the glitches doing around 7 million minute runs but that's pretty much it a little bit longer video but i wanted to give you all the information that we use to shred through that new incursion hopefully it helped you out or if you like the video make sure to like this video and if you want to be updated about the division 2 or even the whole Division Universe and the future Division 3. Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. And I will see you in the next video. Pure Prime out.